Hey everyone, I'm meteorologist Mark Collins. If you've ever been to the beach, you've probably seen some sargassum seaweed on our coastline. It's that brown micro macro algae that actually has a little kind of air filled ball floats on there and you can pop them, they pop and uh, you know, they're really kind of beneficial in the ocean. They act as mats where sea turtles can find refuge uh, and they're pretty cool to play with. If you're ever in the water, you pick one up, you might see a little juvenile file fish or some other type of even shrimp that adhere to those structures and you can actually kind of pull them apart. Well, there is a problem side to it and it's because of the nutrient loading from the uh, Amazon River, all the nutrients that are getting washed into the river from the deforestation is kind of loading up the Atlantic with fertilizer, if you will, for these type of algae plants. And it's been exploding over the years. And this year we've had the largest amounts ever on record in the Atlantic. And the amounts have been doubling since December to January. The amounts have doubled in size consecutively and that's something that hasn't happened since 2018 which was the worst season on record here's a picture of what it looks like you can see these are the beaches down in the Yucatan Yucatan is notorious uh, for the wash up of these uh, beaching events and it can become like a brown carpet and there's almost an industry down there where workers harvest it and use it as fertilizer don't eat plants that are fertilized by it because it contains arsenic and that could leach into the plants. But nonetheless, uh, food stocks like cow food, they turn it into that. And here you can see a bigger map that shows how the Amazon River kind of dumps out into the Atlantic. And notice how these areas in red in the central Atlantic, that's where it forms. And then the currents tend to blow it into the Caribbean Sea and eventually can wind up into the Gulf of Mexico and into the Gulf Stream. When it does get into the Gulf Stream, it can move up and down the East Coast and occasionally wash up on Jacksonville beaches if the easterly winds and the curry, uh, eddies uh, kind of push it that way. This is a current satellite view of the concentrations, these big floating mats here in the Caribbean Sea. And although during the month of March, the levels have decreased, there's enough of it out there in the Caribbean where the forecast is for it to potentially uh, increase in the Caribbean Sea and Gulf of Mexico. The University of South Florida provides bulletin updates each month during the seaweed season. And for March, they expect it to increase and perhaps even into April as well. July is the peak and after July, the tendency is for these seaweed concentrations to diminish. Notice here, as we go back in the years, all the way to 2018, you can see on the left side of your screen, all the red, that was the worst season. And notice how last year we had the worst season since then in 2022. There was a lot of uh, seaweed during May, June and July and that was causing problems for many of the islands. But if you see it on the beach, it's harmless, but if it becomes really concentrated, sometimes like uh, when it gets concentrated with red tide, it can harvest some of those toxins in the seaweed. So just kind of avoid it if you are walking through it, but otherwise it's no major threat. All right, I'm meteorologist Mark Collins. You can read newsforjacks.com, read more about it right there. Enjoy.